Hi, this is Fish and welcome to Fish Picks. Today we'll be taking a look at this mini lathe and considering whether this is a useful tool for lock sport. So let's get into it. A month or so ago I released one of my more popular tutorial videos in which I demonstrated how to make a Chris Capoon inspired universal tension wrench from windscreen wipers. As part of that process I used a Dremel to grind and polish the steel stock which inspired one or two comments from concerned viewers who noticed that there was a little bit of drift because I was necessarily operating single handed, my left being used to stabilise the power tool. This wasn't ideal from a safety perspective but also it meant that I had reduced precision in manipulating the material I was working on. Then I got a message from fellow lock sporter Jeff Yates who suggested I might look into picking up a mini lathe. So I did and this is it. This is the TW Soul 150 watt mini lathe. Compact power tools like this are designed for domestic craft work such as bead making and small wood turning projects like making chest pieces and other small items and I picked this one up on Amazon for $55.99. Now there are cheaper mini lathes in the market but I decided to go with something that was mid-range because I wanted the more robust stainless steel dust cover whereas the cheaper versions tend to come with PVC plastic. I also noticed that this model offers variable speeds, in this case from 4000 up to 7000 RPM, which was almost 50% better than some of the lower end lathes and so I suspect the motor is a little better made on this one. To put this into perspective, most domestic drills operate between 1000 and 3000 RPM, while the Dremel hand tool, which is already a favourite among lock sporters, can be cranked all the way up to 35,000 RPM. And this is also, of course, reflected in the price, the Dremel 4000 currently costing a little over £100. And you'd also need a tabletop vice to hold it securely, which I don't have. So, in this review we'll be looking at whether the power of this motor is sufficient for the kinds of work we're likely to want to be able to perform in lock sport and consider whether it's a worthwhile investment. But first let's take a closer look at the lathe itself. It weighs in at 1.85 kilograms or just over 4 pounds and is 37 centimeters long, 10 centimeters wide and 9 centimetres tall making it very compact and allowing it to sit easily on a desk or a workbench. It has rubber bungs on the base so that helps to stabilise it but I think for some projects you might want to clamp it in place to prevent any smaller movements. I didn't need to do this for the tests I conducted but it wouldn't be an onerous process to set this up. The dust cover on this model has cooling holes on both sides it wipes down easily and comes with a range of accessories including a chuck key and a wood turning tool. But for my purposes I stripped most of these additional accessories down including the rear double bull bearing tail stock, the cutting table and the knife frame. This leaves a clean space to operate from which suited my purposes but it's good to have these add-ons because who knows what I'll try my hand at in the future. It does come with a manual but like most of these budget consumer items it's manufactured in China and so is written with the exception of the title informing me that this indeed is a manual in Hansa and so for me at least it's indecipherable. That having been said there's very little to the operation of the lathe and YouTube is your friend if you want to know more about wood turning and safety guidelines. The on off switch is mounted on the side of the unit and the power cable plugs in at the opposite side leading to the transformer which is also where you'll find the variable power control which is slide operated. The unit is relatively quiet in comparison to the Dremel for example and I've run it for 10 or 15 minutes at a time without any noticeable heat build up. The chuck is nicely tapered and caters for bits ranging from 0.6 to 6.5 millimetres, that's 0.02 to 0.26 inches. 
I found that this is more than sufficient for the bits and pin diameters we're likely to be working with and the chuck key provided ensures that everything is held tightly when operating the lathe. It goes without saying that for all the demonstrations which are to follow I wore safety glasses. I know friends who have got metal fragments in their eyes and it's really not pleasant so please don't forget this simple precaution. The first thing I wanted to try out was some buffing and polishing of a pick to bring it to a mirror finish and the mini lathe did an excellent job freeing up both of my hands so that I could be really precise in my manipulation of the pick profile. Then I switched out for a grinding bit and worked on a new batch of tension wrenches. These are made, as I mentioned earlier, with sprung steel, but the RPMs were more than adequate to grind away the excess material without any seeming strain on the motor. I found that even with the thicker stock, the lathe made short work of this task and I was able to achieve some really nice results. The last thing I wanted to try out was to make my first security driver pins. I've been watching a number of tutorials recently on this topic and had already got my hands on some 3mm brass rod. To shape the pins I tried a hacksaw blade, a sharp edged file and a jeweler's saw which has a very fine filament blade, perfect for making serrations and precise cuts. Again the mini lathe coped admirably and for my first foray into making security pins I think these turned out quite well. After cutting them to the required length they just needed tidying up with some thousand grit wet and dry paper and again I didn't get any sense that the motor was under duress at any point. What I can't say at this stage of course is the longevity of this tool but so far I'm very happy with this purchase. So if you've already got a Dremel and a means of stabilising it in a good vice then a mini lathe like this might not make any sense as an investment but if you don't then this would seem to be a relatively cheap way of getting into lock sport tooling. Let me know what you think of the mini lathe in the comments. Thanks for watching and until next time take good care.